for that. Um, my name is Johnny. I'm one of the leaders here at Grace Church. It's good to be together as a whole church family celebrating Easter. And before I start talking, I'm just going to hand over to one of the youth, Madeline, who's going to read a, a passage from the Bible, which this um, drama that you've just seen uh, was based on. So I'm just going to hand over to her now. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go and make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made a tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. After the Sabbath, at dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and go into the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were made of snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thanks, Madeline. Um, it's, it's just helpful to hear the passage um, that you, you saw dramatised there. Um, children, if you have not yet dug into your bags, why? Come on. So if you have not pestered your parents to open the sweets that are in there uh, and cracked into your crafts, make sure you are doing that. Make sure you have a go at that. And just so you know, we really want to see your crafts. We want to see what amazing craftsmanship you have done um, with your wonderful puzzles. So please send those in. Hopefully on the screen should be an email address. Send your pictures in of your crafts that you, you might have done this morning. You might do it throughout the week. And we'll show those maybe at the end, but we will also show some next week as well. So do send those in. We want to see your wonder, 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 your wonderful crafts. Um, I'm talking this morning on fairy tales uh, and facts. You probably know famous fairy tale endings. So it wasn't looking good, but then the dragon was slain, or it wasn't looking good, and the wicked king was overthrown, or Shrek won Fiona, or Cinderella put on the slipper and they lived happily ever after the end. Well, I don't know what you make of fairy tales, but today I have titled my talk The Resurrection, Fairy Tale or Fact. So you may think of the resurrection as a form of fairy tale, a made-up story, a myth. And once there were two very famous fantasy um, fairy tale writers, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, and they were having a conversation one day, and they were talking about Christianity. And at the time, C.S. Lewis was not a Christian, but, but Tolkien was, and C.S. Lewis had a problem with Christianity. 
He had an issue with it, and his, his gripe with it was the resurrection story in particular. That was the thing that he couldn't get his head around. That was the thing to him that was completely nuts. He thought Christians were just nuts to insist that God had come down from heaven, died on a tree, and then come back to life. He thought, oh, that's too much, like a Greek myth. It, it, can't, it can't be true. He didn't believe that Easter story. This morning, do you resonate with C.S. Lewis? Do you think the resurrection story is a fairy tale, a myth, or a, or a theory? And if we're honest, from first glance, we look at, we look at the, the resurrection and we go, it does seem unlikely it doesn't, it doesn't seem like yeah, that's definitely true. We look at it and go, oh, does it, oh that, that doesn't, doesn't seem like it could happen. And we, we can start to doubt. And Jesus dying on a cross and coming back to life, the resurrection, could, could it be true, really? This morning is part one of two. So this week and next week, we are going to be looking at the resurrection story. And today I'm going to address whether we can trust the resurrection story. And then next week, Joe Leach is going to be putting a bit more to that, and he will be explaining the impact of the resurrection in our lives if it were true. Imagine I'm drawing the picture, and then he's going to colour it in, and you can decide which is more important, just saying. Um, But you might be thinking... But I believe the resurrection. I, I believe that, that it's true. Well, that, that's good. However, knowing the facts of why we believe the resurrection to be true is important to be able to share with our neighbours, to be able to talk to Greta on the playground, to, to have conversations with people about it. It's important that we know that it's true as well. So to help this morning, my plan is that I'm going to lay out some suggestions as, uh, the, from theories that say the resurrection is not true. So I'm going to lay those out, and then I'm going to then try and explain why those theories cannot possibly be true, and then finally come to the most likely conclusion. Um, clever historians would believe, it's really important before I start, that you understand that clever historians would believe these facts about the gospel, about the message that you, you heard read a moment ago, um, that Jesus died, that there was an empty tomb, and finally that there were reported appearances of Jesus. So let's start with this one. Um, the Bible says that Jesus died. But can we be sure of this? Can we be sure that Jesus definitely died? Because if he didn't die, the whole thing's just, just made up, and it, is, it would be a fairy tale. So let, let's have a look if Jesus really died. Well, the, the first theory is called the swoon theory, and it goes a little bit as follows. For all intents and purposes, Jesus, he appeared like he had died, but he wasn't really dead. He didn't really die. Instead, from pain, from shock, from exhaustion, he fainted, or the fancy word swooned, um, which would make him seem as though he had died. And then, you can imagine a zombie, Ooh, he revived in the coolness of the tomb, uh, and, and he rolled the stone out the way, and then he just waltz into town and says, here I am, I'm alive, hello, hello, hello. Scientifically, that theory sounds vaguely possible. It sounds like it could have happened until we look at evidence. If Jesus had only swooned or fainted on the cross, he still would have been in a lot of pain, like a crazy amount of pain. Imagine pain and then add pain onto that. Like that is how much pain he would have been in, and, and he would have been exhausted, he would have been, like he hadn't eaten for a very, very long time. In essence, he would need a really long rest. And if Jesus did somehow survive the cross, he would have had to figure out, first of all, where he was. He was in this dark tomb. He had to figure out where he was and then move this humongous stone out of the way. And sadly, it wasn't sellotape or blue tack that, that held it in place. It was a bit, bit harder than that. And then he would have had to make his way into town, which is very, very unlikely. 
It's even more unlikely when we take the Romans, right? The Romans, they were the kings of performing crucifixions. They knew how to do it. They were no amateurs. They knew how to make it painful. They knew how to make it fatal. And also, as a Roman soldier put a spear into Jesus' side just to make sure Jesus was declared a goner in the judgment of soldiers, in the judgment of Pilate, in the judgment of the Jews that were there, and the women who were wrapping uh, up his body, as like, like they mummified his body, in, sort of. Um, talking of wrapping, the swoon theory also doesn't account for the wrappings of the, that Jesus was wrapped in being left where Jesus' body had been inside the empty tomb. And to, for Jesus to have done it, he would have done, had to do a Harry Houdini, but even better. Right? His body would have bound, been bound much tighter than that, and he would have had hundreds of pounds of spices wrapped into that to try and get him out. So I've tried something like this. It's probably a little bit less impressive, but here you go. This is me trying that very thing. Mimi's going to tie my legs up, uh, and I'm going to see if I can escape just to demonstrate a little bit probably not as well as I could have, um, how Jesus uh, would have struggled to have escaped having his whole body tied up. Um, and I'm just gonna have my feet tied up. So you ready? Yeah. Go. Tight as you can, okay? Done. Done. Right, here I go, trying to escape, can't use my hands. Right, here we go. I hope you enjoyed that. She, she is clearly very, very strong. Um, evidence, historical and biblical, agree Jesus definitely died. But what about the resurrection? Could that be fairy tale or, or really, could it be fact? Let, let's find out. The hallucination theory is much, the, re, the rest of these theories are much more based on the resurrection. So the hallucination theory, well, this theory says that all the appearances of Jesus to his friends, um, they, they were imagined because they were so grief-stricken, because they just were trying to get over the whole thing. Um, they, they imagined all this up. Well, first of all, in the, eyes, uh, uh, in the eyewitness accounts of Jesus uh, in the Gospels, we see that his friends were also initially very skeptical of this. They were like, no, 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 no. In Luke 24, they go, it's a ghost. They think they've imagined this thing up. So they take steps to check that Jesus uh, was physically there by, by touching his hands. And we'll, we'll see that again next week in our drama. Just a sneaky um, plot spoiler there for you. So sorry about that. Um, but outside of the Bible, psychiatrists also would claim that hallucinations only happen to certain people. They're restricted by when they take place. They're restricted by where they take place. They are based, they would say hallucinations are based on a position of hope. The situation looks hopeful when they're, they're hoping for something. There, there is no hope in this situation. Jesus was a goner. Ultimately, we can cross this theory out as it holds not very much weight, and it, it can't account for the physical interactions of these um, appearances of Jesus with his friends. It wouldn't have been possible for them to have imagined that. And, and the amount of places and people that Jesus spoke to and met with um, in, in one group as well is, is hard to, to fathom. And finally, the body in the tomb. 
Like, if they had imagined it, they would go, right, let's have a look in the tomb. You're making these statements. Let's go have a look in the tomb. And then they would open the tomb and go, see, he's there. You crazy, crazy people. So he, just those facts alone. But could someone have stolen it? Could someone have taken the body? The, the thief theory. This is the only theory that appears in the Bible. And, and Madeline read it a moment ago. I don't know if you spotted it. But in panic, what the Pharisees did, the, the priests did, they wanted to spread a theory that the disciples had stolen and taken the body away. Um, and and that's, that's still around today because they didn't want this, this rumor to spread. But could anyone have stolen the body? Could, could the Jew, Jewish leaders have stolen the body? Could the uh, Romans have stolen the body? Could his friends have stolen the body? Well, the Jewish authorities and the Jewish crowd, they would not have taken the body. They wanted Jesus gone. They didn't want him around. Uh, they, they put a Roman guard there to make sure that theft didn't happen. And... Um, the, the Romans, would they have done it? Well, no, they, they wouldn't have because they wanted peace where they were. They didn't want uprisings and, 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 and new movements like this taking place. So, again, to stop that from happening, they would have said, well, here's the body, and they could have, they could have stopped the movement of Jesus in its tracks there and then. And, and the Roman soldiers being Guarding the, guarding the tomb and the Roman seal over it, it made it pretty much illegal and pretty impossible for um, that, to, that to happen, for anyone to steal it. But could the disciples have done it? Because that's what, the, that's what the, the, the chief priests in the Bible were, were trying to um, say happened and, and to, to bribe the um, Roman soldiers that they were asleep and, and Jesus stole the body. Did, could that have happened? Could, could they have crept past and, and, and done that? Well, firstly, the soldiers would have been punished very severely, probably would have been killed had they fallen asleep on the job. And that's why they're trying to pay the... the that's why the chief priests in the Bible wanted to pay off the Roman soldiers. Um, also, the Bible tells us what Jesus' friends were like. They, they were generally a bit thick. They were a bit, just not, they were a bit useless. And it seems unlikely for very shy, timid, um, pretty useless disciples to sneak past highly trained soldiers and to move this huge rock, even if, if they were asleep. To show the craziness of this idea, I've got another video for you. Here's my attempt, but with some chocolate. So I've just got home. I'm going to try and attempt to show you how hard it would have been for the disciples to steal Jesus' body. So mine's a bit easier. I'm going to try and steal some chocolate. Kim's in the kitchen cooking. Yeah, she's in there. Uh, the kids are watching telly. I've just got home. The house will probably be a mess, so apologies for that. Right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to see if she's going to notice me. I've got to try and get past my kids first. Here I go. Didn't work. <laughs> uh, I tried. I failed. Just shows how hard it would have been. Um, the greatest evidence is what happened to the disciples 
after all the claims and years of um, uh, down the line. After claiming the resurrection, they, they were executed. They were exiled for preaching about Jesus. If they had stolen the body they, and, and they were about to die, they, were, they could have gone, yeah, here it is, sorry, we, we, we shouldn't have, have lied about this. Someone might die for a belief that they hold really dearly. But nobody's going to die for an outright lie. Ultimately, it, it seems far-fetched to, to make this claim, as it did for the chief priests in, in, in Matthew, to make this claim. And just looking at the evidence from, from the Bible, the, uh, the, the, the final theory is the unknown tomb theory. Um, I find this possibly the most ridiculous of all. It was an early theory that came about that the women who discovered the um, empty tomb they went to the wrong tomb. They went to the wrong place. And so to explain the, the missing body, they went, resurrection. That's, that's the, the, the claim that they came up with. This theory gives very little credit to the women. This, this theory uh, is it's just a bit far-fetched. I forget where my pens are at work. Right, I'm always losing pens. But this is another level to have lost a tomb where your dearest friend and teacher is, is, is crazy. In the drama, we heard that Joseph of Arimathea, um, he lent them their tomb. He's going to know where it is. He's not, it's like, he, he would know. It's like letting your friend store their bike in your shed, but you then don't know where the shed is in your garden. It, it's just nuts. So yeah, that, that one can, can be crossed out nice and quickly. Um, and finally, um, we've got the resurrection. We've got, that is our last theory. And after these likely theories to disprove the resurrection, it seems that the least likely theory has become the most likely. The most powerful argument for the, true, uh, the truth of, of this message is when we consider Jesus. We consider how he died embarrassingly in his 30s. He had no army. He wasn't a, a Roman lead. He wasn't a, 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 a leader of armies. He, he, he had no political party. He left no writings to hand down. He, he had no shred of earthly power. He had no wealth. He had really no earthly uh, significance. He would be followed by no hopers as well. And at the same time, this guy has become the central figure point in history because AD and BC, they flip. He is the central figure of human history. How, how can that happen? How could that have happened to me? and many others, uh, of all the available options, the resurrection is the strongest. But there is a problem with it. There's a problem with the resurrection. The problem is this. It involves a miracle taking place, which is uh, it's, it's hard to swallow. But we shouldn't write it off for that reason alone. We need to take the evidence seriously. We need to weigh it up for ourselves before rejecting it. So for you, I, I ask you the question, is the resurrection a fairy tale or a fact? My, my charge to you, though, is to read the Gospels for yourself and make a choice. I have laid out the facts. I'm never going to convince you by laying out a load of facts. You, you need to read this for yourself. You need to read this to, to find out and you may never have read the Gospels. You may never have, have read this, even as a Christian. Why not read for yourself and ask the question, what if this is a, a fairy tale that happened? What if it's a fairy tale that happened? My challenge for you is to do that and make your own conclusion. So over this week, do that before Joe then speaks next week. What you make of the resurrection matters. 
of this, if it's true, it changes everything. It's like believing your whole life that, that McDonald's is healthy, McDonald's is healthy, McDonald's is healthy, McDonald's is healthy, and then you go to a doctor who says, McDonald's is not healthy. And, and it's just like, whoa, okay, I won't eat that anymore. That's, 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 a, that's a good idea. But you could be asking, okay, but why can't God make it easier? Why, why can't he make it easier that... Th- for me to believe in him than having to just read this, this story that I find difficult to, to believe. It's, that's easier, isn't it? It's easier if Jesus came to my living room this evening, opened the door, gave me a high five with his holy hands, and, and, and that would that, be fine. I, be, I believe after that. But you know what? You and I, we weren't there when Jesus rose from the dead. But... Jesus says, that's all right. That's all right because it's better that way. What? What are you talking about? How can that be better? How is that better? In John, it says, these things are written so that you might believe. You could, um, you could read Jesus in the Bible, and that is better than seeing him. How is that possible? Well, let me explain. Just imagine that tonight in your living room, um, Jesus appears to you. He comes through your door, gives you that high five, and then goes off. Well, that's going to give you a proper spiritual high, isn't it? You're going to be like, whoa, this is amazing! I met Jesus! But over a while, you then start to wonder, oh, did I dream that? Did he actually come? People might even ridicule you, ridicule, ridicule you. I can speak, I promise. Um, and, and then you'll need another experience. You'll need to go, oh, yeah, I need another experience because then I will definitely believe. And so on and so on. Amazingly, it is better to go on the eyewitness testimony of the Bible because Jesus' words, they are there in black and white. So when the doubt comes, when the ridicule comes, when it's three in the morning and you're going, God, where are you? When, when a loved one dies, we can see Jesus by opening this book, by opening the Bible and encountering him. So I say again, read it for yourself. Make a choice today. Read it and find out. Could this possibly be true? Um, Finally, I told you earlier uh, about the conversation between C.S. Lewis and J.R. Tolkien. Um, You know what? Reading this book is what caused C.S. Lewis to believe. It's what caused him to meet Jesus It's how millions of people across the globe, across the years, have done so. Children, this plea is not just for adults. Explore your Bible. Read your Bible and ask the tricky questions of Jesus and and see how the Bible answers them. I don't normally do recommendations for books, but I, I will today. I cannot recommend this book enough, as you can tell from its tattiness. Um, This is, uh, for younger children, this is fantastic. This is a brilliant, brilliant book. It tells the stories of Jesus. It puts it in the context of the whole Bible uh, and is is a fantastic, fantastic book for reading as as families together. Um, So yeah, get get that book, read it together. I I do say, I do recommend that. Read it, explore it, explore more of Jesus. and also, I don't have a physical copy of it here because I own it on Kindle, so apologies. But if you were older, a little bit older, um, I would recommend reading a book by Glenn Scrivener called Love Story. Uh, it explains the great love story of Easter. It's a really helpful tool as well with non-Christians, um, having conversations with them. So yeah, that, the, those two books I do recommend. But ultimately... For you to make a decision, the the Bible is is the one to look at. Look at the Gospels. Read them. Could this fairy tale be real? Today we've dramatized it. We've dramatized the good news of the resurrection. We have read the good news of the resurrection. We have heard facts about the good news of the resurrection. And we have seen a hero of heroes. 
I pray that you will read about this hero over the next week and, and decide what you think. What do you think of this hero? Is it resurrection fairy tale or, or fact? We've seen this story is legit. Next week, we're going to see how that impacts us. How does that change our lives? And um, we're going to do that next week. So for now, I'm going to pray, uh, and then we're going to sing again. We're going to worship by thanking God for the resurrection. So I'm going to pray. God, I thank you that you uh, came back to life. Lord, not only uh, does does your, your words tell us, but pure logic also tells us, Lord, but it, it does involve a miracle. It involves you coming back to life and doing the thing that none of us can do. But because you did it, God, because you came back to life, Lord, we can all be resurrected with you. We can all have eternity with you. And I thank you, Jesus, that you won a victory. You won it on the cross and in coming back to life, you are taking us with you. You are giving us an offer to come with you on this incredible love story. And, and I do pray, Lord, that this week, as we go about our week, we'll start to ask the questions and we'll start to see answers in your word as we, as we go through our days. We, we cling on to you. We hold on to you. We worship you. Amen. We're going to hand over to Eilis and we're going to sing together again.